guys, James here today and welcome back to another video, something that's gonna be a little bit different, I know, but you know, sit back, relax, I think, and I hope, that this is actually gonna be something you guys really do enjoy. So the other week I got the chance to go to Germany and the opportunity to stream a game called Planet Zoo. I played it for about six hours there and you guys actually seem to really enjoy it. I think it's something really, really special. It's all about building and running a zoo. And I think it's a really, it's just a really beautiful game and I'm really excited for it. And I hope you guys enjoy it as well. So we're starting off looking at one of the themes in the game. This is one of the building themes, which is the Indian subcontinent. Uh, and all of this park is actually built uh, piece by piece. So basically you can construct whatever you want, which can be time consuming. Uh, in Planet Coaster, which is obviously a similar game and has a similar building mechanic, it can take quite a while. However, you can also use those pieces uh, to create and save like blueprints, which is basically like saving something to the gallery in The Sims. And you can put it in your game and place them a lot easier. So you can just download a bunch of stuff people have shared and build that way if you prefer. Uh, but it does allow for you to do practically anything. In the case of this park, it's pretty nuts. Uh, and also right away, we've already had an animal escape. So that is something that can happen if uh, the well-being of animals are, are not too good. They will be upset and then they'll sort of try and get out of the enclosure. So you want to keep the animals happy. Uh, and when they get out, well, first of all, there's a big hole in the enclosure. Like we got a big gap in the fence right there. Uh, what we want to do is actually fix that up. So we're just going to barriers and we can put that back. Uh, but the way we get animals back in, we need to get a uh, hire a vet if we don't have any already. And the vets will go after and tranquilize the animals and then take them back to their enclosures. Uh, but yeah, so guests will end up running away from animals that get out, obviously, which makes sense. But no, no guests can actually be harmed. There's no like violence against uh, people in the game. So they can't actually attack people in that way. Uh, so they will just sort of tranquilize the animal, like I said, take him back. Oh, look, it fell over. It's so sad. And then I actually love this animation where they get put into a box and then they're just, you know, just carried back. It's like shrinks down and then they're carried back to their enclosure. You can see the guy just sort of runs them back to where they need to be. Uh, so I really just wanted to, in this video, go through... Uh, we're going to be basically looking at quite a few different animals. So obviously we've seen uh, a little bit of the rhinos here. Uh, and then we can sort of have a look at how we can actually take care of the animals, make their enclosures uh, perfect for them. Because right now, this zoo, which is actually one of the scenarios in the game. So it's like one of the ones that you'll play through and you're challenged to. And there will actually be like narration and story as well that you'll play along through. Or you can play in sandbox mode if you want. But this is one of the sort of... Uh, scenarios where you are presented with a park that has issues and we're going to go through and fix it. And I got to say, one really thing, I mean, thing you might have already noticed, one really important thing you might have already noticed is how good this game looks. Uh, like even be being this close up to the animals, you can see all the animations on them. And this one right here, the fur on them, they actually, were, they were talking about the fur. And I think they've spoken about this a little bit in some of their videos on their official channel is where they had to sort of develop their own, uh, unique like sort of fur technology to make them look as fluffy and realistic as they do. I mean, look at it. It actually look, it looks so good, but um, there's so many little details in the animals. Like even like when their ears just like flick and that, it's really, I don't know. It is really cute <laughs> to be fair. Uh, so this enclosure, I think is the Springbok and uh, what was the other one? Like the deers or something. Uh, oh, I can't remember. I'm not, I'm not an animal expert. Not yet, but after I, actually that's something really cool about this game. So, when, when you're playing this game, you can actually, as you're researching and unlocking stuff, it will actually give you a lot of real world information about these animals. And it's actually really educational. You learn a lot from it. And uh, this right here with the animal all shiny, they can get wet and then they actually look like they're wet. I don't know, it's just a nice little visual touch uh, to it. But this enclosure is really quite sad. It's just like dirt and arid and a bit dry. Uh, so we can actually go through and fix that up. Now on the right hand side here, we actually have that little panel with the red. So I've actually selected one of the animals. We can go into the terrain tab and it'll tell us exactly what that animal wants to be happy. And this is also a mixed enclosure with two different types of animals because obviously some animals work well with each other. And in that case, we want to make sure that the enclosure uh, represents, well, is happy, it was, is happy, is made nice for both of the animals and is suitable to both of them. Or more, there can be obviously more than two types of two species in a, in a habitat. Uh, but in this case, we have a couple and we want to make sure there's enough short grass and we need to add some long grass. We want to make sure there's not too much rock and not too much soil. So we're trying to just really balance it out nicely. 
And you can actually see in this enclosure as well. So we've got the barrier fence around it. At the back, there's actually just a cliff face. So you can actually use terrain as a as a way to stop animals from getting out. Uh, there is still like a barrier buried under the ground, but you can sort of hide it by putting it underneath the ground. Uh, over here, we have the tapirs as well. Uh, and they have a really sad inclusion. It's really sad. This zoo, the, the structure and the architecture of this zoo is beautiful, but some of these homes, they need, they need a little bit of love. They do need a little bit of love. So these guys, uh, they're looking a little sad, you know? They, they, I mean, they're beautiful. Don't get me wrong, they look beautiful, but they're feeling, I feel like they need a little bit of love. Some of these guys though, look at his nose. It's like, <laughs> I don't know, Tappy is cute. Uh, anyway, so these guys, um, we want to, again, do the sort of terrain thing. We need to do some more tree coverage. And the happier animals are, the more interested it, your guests are in seeing them. Uh, so we also, that's another reason we want to actually make them happy because, you know, a zoo should be about the welfare of animals and not just a spectacle for guests. So guests are not happy if it's just an animal and a, a terrible environment. You know, they want to see the animals happy. They want to see them thriving. And in this case, the enrichment of the tapirs is really low. So in the build menu for, I believe it's for the habitats, there's an enrichment category where we can find uh, sort of feeding uh enrichment uh, items like and we can also find toys in that and we can give them what they need and an interesting thing to know as well and there's something i love about this game they've really put a lot of attention into uh the needs of the animals like the enrichment items like if you put down a toy over time they will start getting bored of that item and they will want a new item also yeah the animals can can do a little oopsie doopsie actually something really interesting about that now when i was talking to them about it uh i went over to gamescom and uh, we were talking about it there and they're like yeah we had like one guy that was like full-on researching how animals defecate, how much each animal does it, how often. That, that was one guy that was just... And then they said he was just watching poo videos, like, all day of, like, animals to make sure that it's right and it is spot on. So, if you want to learn about the digestive tracts of certain animals, Planet Zoo is the way to go. Yeah, so we can filter by the species here and we can see which toys and which food enrichment items that they will actually want to use. So in this case, we've got this sort of uh, little, uh, what is it called? I don't know, it's like this sort of um, foraging uh, pit or whatever it was called. So they'll go in there and they'll gra grab out food So and zookeepers will come in and fill it up with food uh, and they'll sort of do all of that. And we'll talk more about the zookeepers uh, a little bit later in this video too because that's also really cool and the staff and all that. Uh, and then we also have, this is really interesting. So not only uh, the look and feel of the habitat is important, but the temperature is too. And that actually does matter to the animals. So we can see how hot or cold uh, a habitat is. And in this case, we put down a little sprinkler, which you can see the tapio ran over to immediately because uh, they like a little bit of water, like feeling a little bit fresh. And it also is a little bit cooler there. But you can put down temperature controlling systems to cool down complete environments as well. And we'll see a little bit more of that uh, uh, in the grizzly bear enclosure a little bit later where it's a bit cooler. But yeah, so the tapirs are feeling a little bit happier now. The happier the animals are, the more likely they are to mate as well because that is something that they will do. Uh, so to make them even happier, we want to make sure that the, the, the plants and then the foliage is also really well suited. So in this menu, we can see they are... The, you can see the biomes that they like, what type of trees they like, what uh, air, like what part of the world they are from, and from that we can use the filters in the category uh, into the catalog to choose the right foliage and make them happy that way. And you can see we now have enough coverage and there's enough plants to make them happy. So now this habitat for them is perfect. Like they they're gonna be so happy. And look at this. They're having a little smooch. Ah, oh, see, they like each other. Now that they're happy, they can sort of get to know each other a little bit better. And this is sort of the extent at which you'll see animals mate. You won't see anything more than that. Kind of like a Sims and Woohoo situation. It's, you know, very, very subdued. Uh, it's like sort of the cats and dogs and Sims. And look, they had a little baby. So yeah, yeah, animals can have little babies. Uh, and depending on the, uh, the type of animal, they can obviously have bigger or smaller litters. It really depends. And in this case, this is a really good way to see how unique the animals can be. We only have one baby tapir here. Uh, I don't know what, what the term would be for a baby tapir, but all the markings over the animal, if you have multiple of them, 
all the animals are unique and they are actually really special in that way. And they've put a lot of time and effort into making animals look unique and different from one another, which I think is really, really special. And in this, at this, by the way, I've just turned on the weather so we can see the rain here. By the way, the rain looks amazing. This is also, the weather system is also something really important too. Depending on the temperature, the weather, whether it's raining or snowing, certain animals will seek shelter. So if you don't have enough shelter for an animal that wants to be undercover, that's also something to be a, a paying attention to. If it's cold when it starts like snowing or something like that, your animals might want to be somewhere warm. And on certain maps in certain biomes, it may be snowing, but the snow may not may not settle on the ground if it's not cold enough. So if it's still above zero degrees, it's not gonna like the snow won't settle. Uh, and in this case, you can see some of these guys are happy being outside. Some of them have run underneath. And if we check out one of the heat maps again, which will actually you know show the temperature, you can see it's a little bit warmer undercover than it is outside. So you can see underneath the cover, it's a little bit more orange. Outside, it's a bit more blue because that's where it's snowing at the moment. But it's not freezing. So it's not, it's not completely freezing. It's still eight degrees. So most of the animals should be okay with that. But I think the temperature system is really, really interesting. And that plays into habitat control as well, making sure animals are happy at all times. Uh, and it's just something that, it's a really, really nice detail. And something that I've always really been interested in with uh, the Sims is I've always wanted like big venues and like being able to go specifically I, I think I've mentioned wanting like zoos in the Sims before but you know what I, th I think we're gonna be good with this <laughs> I think I'll be good with this so over here this you can see this whole area is actually quite a dark blue this is the grizzly bear enclosure they like it a little bit colder so they actually have some temperature control units here and you can see there's actually snow that settled in this enclosure because it is colder and climate controlled compared to other places but that's what the bears like so they actually really enjoy it and they have this like this little cave here which you can build out of the terrain and oh by the way if you want to see any more of this i did do three live streams i had the opportunity to live stream this for about six hours from gamescom when i was over there uh the other week so i played a lot of that and i'll link them, those down below it's on my live stream channel you watch those back. We did a lot of building. We did a lot of exploring. We looked at a lot of a lot of this stuff in more detail. And right here is the mandrel. So this is one of the species that are able to climb certain structures, which we just saw a little bit of a glimpse of. Uh, but of course, you can see more of that uh, in sort of official gameplay videos and that. And this guy, I've forgotten what species this is, but uh, obviously some sort of reptile. <laughs> What is it? I can't, I've completely forgotten. But anyway, this is something really important too. You can see if we go into this mode, the water mode, we can see the water is actually red. And we can see it physically just a moment ago that the water was brown and dirty. So you actually need to make sure that you have water treatment plants, not just for like animals that can swim in water, but if they're drinking water and it's dirty, then that's going to be a big problem because they'll get sick and then the guests in the park will be unhappy because the animal is sick. Uh, so we need to make sure that we have water treatment plants, that they are powered and that they're maintained because if, we, if one of them breaks, the water will start getting dirty. So we need to have the staff continually making sure that it's okay. So you get to have mechanics to make sure things are repaired and that all that kind of stuff is really quite important. And now this guy can be way happier and he can swim in the water and guests can see him better as well because the water's not as dirty. And he won't get as sick as he would otherwise. And here is a little preview of a Bengal tiger. These guys, look, this is beautiful. I think this is one of my favorite animals in the game so far that we've seen. And I did a whole like uh, enclosure build for him in one of the live streams, which I'll link on screen as well, if you want to check that out. Uh, so I thought I'd just quickly show him off here, nice and up close, because he's an amazing looking animal. And we built a whole custom place for him in one of the live streams. So if you want to check that out, uh, I think uh, I think you'll enjoy it. If you're at all interested in this game, uh, I think it's worth having a look at uh, more of it for sure. And here are the baby cubs with the grizzly bears because they also were quite happy. We fixed up their welfare a little bit. I believe their water in the enclosure is still a little uh, stank because uh, the we didn't really clean the water up yet, but they were still happy enough to have some cubs. I think they had two of them. So we've got another little one over here and you can see uh, either mom or dad is just plonked on the ground there. It is honestly so fun to just look at these animals closely. Actually, so we can see here that their last drink cleanliness on the panel there, zero percent. So that is something that's really important. And now that we've cleaned up the water, I put down a water treatment plant. They took another sip, 
it's gone back up to 100%. The water is nice and clean. Now, these are also something really special in this game, which I don't think has really been in a zoo game before. These are little uh, exhibits. So these are all the small animals like reptiles and beetles and bugs and spiders, all that kind of stuff. And these can be customized too. So we can choose which animals we want to put in here. And you can see the suitability for this one is not great. So we actually need to turn on some of these customizations to make the animal happy. And you can see if we turn on a broken hollow log, uh, we really just need one enrichment from each of the category to make the suitability for this beetle uh you know appropriate and this is something you can sort of customize even the temp uh, temperature sliders and humidity that's all really important too and i think i think it's really cool that there's that much detail in all this stuff now these guys are really unhappy they are protesting you will get protesters in your park and people will be unhappy if your animals are unhappy you can see our uh, uh rhinoceros here is actually starving which is a little a little sad. And that will sometimes happen because we don't have enough zookeepers. And in this case, it was because we didn't have enough zookeepers. So we just had to get a few more of them to be able to take care of them. But yeah, guests will come into your park just to protest you. Uh, but yeah, so talking about the staff and zookeepers and all that, we actually have these staff buildings, which generally you want to hide away from public view. You want them behind all that stuff. So this is actually the vet clinic here. You can fly in here and you can actually see them bring animals in here and like work on them. They will come in here with an animal, they'll put it on the table, or if it's a big animal, the table will sort of disappear and it'll be on the ground. And we did see some of those in my live streams as well. So if you want to see more of that, it's over there. And over here is the, the sort of zookeeper hut where they will walk in and you can see them preparing food in the kitchen. They'll start like chopping stuff up. They'll grab a bucket and they'll go back over to the uh, enclosure or the habitat to, to deliver it. So it's really important that you have these staff buildings actually really close to where they need to go. If they're too far away, you'll have issues of the animals not being fed enough, not being taken care of. So it's a really important thing for the animal's welfare, for it all to be close, efficient, and something that they can actually do as quickly as possible. So you can see the guy will come in here, he'll grab a bucket, uh, which so he sort of sweeped it into this little bit here and he's got the bucket of food then he'll walk out and he'll take it to wherever he is going with it so that is something that's actually really nice to see this and in here is the little staff room and you can see the people sitting down here uh, they're watching a blank TV, having fun, I guess. And then, <laughs> and then there's another guy sitting on a chair over there. So it's like all these really nice details you can just see. And then this person just chilling in the corner. They're kind of just like, uh, what up, bruh? What's going on, bruh? I'm just chilling. I just want to stand, you know? I just like standing. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, like there's really, like you can really zoom in almost anywhere in this game and sort of see this detail. But I think my favorite thing about Planet Zoo so far is just how much you need to actually take care. Like this game, there's like Zoo Tycoon and those kind of games, are, you know, typically about making money. Like that's kind of what it is. But this has such a heavy focus on the welfare of the animals and how important it is to take care of them. And if we aren't conserving the animals, and that's actually a big part of this game as well as animal conservation and all that and healthy breeding. One important thing as well that I've mentioned is uh, you need to make sure you're not really inbreeding the animals too much. You actually do need to trade with other zoos to get different animals in, send yours off, and get a keep a healthy population because animals will not be healthy if you don't do that. And that's something that's also important. So it's actually a really, really nice, like, educational game at the same time of, as being really in-depth and quite detailed and fun. Like, I, I played this for six hours already, actually probably seven also with this demo that I'm playing here. And I cannot wait to play more. And I really hope you guys are excited for it too, because I think this is something really special like that we could play here on this channel. And I think that you guys, this is something, I, I honestly think that this is something that you guys will really enjoy to watch and or play yourself, uh, because it does have such a personal aspect to it. Where you really do get to know the animals when you're up that close with them. And here's just a few other animals as well. Got some elephants over here. I think there's some giraffe around maybe, maybe not in this enclosure. I think I placed some in my live stream, but yeah, we got some elephants as well. Um, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this. It was just a little look at Planet Zoo, something a bit different, uh, but something that I think will uh, be really, really fun. And I think it's something that you guys will hopefully enjoy too, because I am really looking forward to it. If you want to see more of this, please let me know in the comments down below. If you, if you like seeing something a little bit different, I really hope you do, because that is one of the reasons we changed the channel name. So we can sort of play around with games that fit. Like, and don't get me wrong, we're not going to be doing games that make no sense here, but I think 
this is a nice fit. So thanks for watching guys. Let me know what you think down below. I will see you next time and have an awesome day.